Hi guys and welcome back to another fly tying tutorial. Now in the winter months there's several ways to go at your still water fishing. You can either go big and gaudy like a zonker or a snake fly and wheak it back at 200 miles an hour or you can get small and either go very static under a bung or a very slow figure of eight retrieve. So this fly is ideal for the latter and without further ado let's get into it. The hook in the vise then is a Hanak H230 barbless hook. This one's at size 14. It's on a medium wire and it's finished in black nickel. The thread I'm going to be using today is Nano Silk. It's from Sempify. It's black and it's at 50D or 12 watt if you prefer. Now I've already put a 2.3 millimeter countersunk tungsten bead on the hook. And the first thing I want to do, as I'm using nano silk and as always, is just put a tiny little dot of super glue onto the shank. And I'm going to use my silk just to work that up and down the shank. I'm going to come in behind the bead with several turns just to get me started. And then use the rat's tail to bring my thread down the shank of the hook all the way to where a barb would be on a barbed hook and then I can remove my waist. Now for the tailing material of this fly I'm going to use some Coq de Leon. Uh, this one's from Troutline and it's called Rehonen, I think. It's Spanish. My Spanish isn't great so if my pronunciation's wrong you can have a laugh at my expense, but I do like Coq de Leon for these smaller flies. They've got very thin, sparse fibres and they make great tails. So I want to take maybe a dozen or so fibres from the stem and I'm going to dress it up and I want about the length of the shank. I'll swap hands over, come in with my thread. Now when I'm putting the tail on, just a tip here, I'm just holding it to my side of the shank. Now when I bring my thread over, I'm going to do it slowly, it brings the feather on top. And then if I can just let go there for a second, you can see the feathers come directly on top of the shank. And then I can catch in the rest of the tail. My bead's just moved slightly there. Not a big fan of the, the moving bead, so I will correct that in a second. I'm just going to come in, remove my excess. So we'll just get another few wraps, hopefully enough is to cause a bump at the front of the hook and stop that bead moving round. Now I do want to create a little bit of a taper into the body and when you're using nano silk this can be a chore. Uh, it, it's very thin and getting that bulked up to create the taper can be a bit of a pain but uh, I still think that the nano silk its pros outweighs its cons so I've brought my thread all the way back to where my tail starts next I'm going to come in with some stripped peacock hair now this one's been dyed brown, I like the brown, gives a very pleasing effect. Now when you take these um, dyed ones out already, I like to give them a little damp down with my tongue. And I don't want the really, really thin bit. So I'm going to come in with my snips and just take it. Oh, rogue fibre attracting itself to the fly. Shows you how deadly it is, it's even picking up fibres. <laughs> okay, so I've caught that in. Now, there's a couple of ways of doing the body here. Uh, one way is to put a coat of super glue in before you bring your peacock hair all up. But I like to use UV resin, so there's no need for the super glue. Now, I've put in a lot of extra turns just in behind the bead. And the reason for that is I'm going to use the rotary function on my vise to wrap this body. Now what I like about doing it this way 
is I can help avoid the hook point. Uh, strip peacock herald is very brutal and if you catch the hook point it's game over. Uh, you need to start again. But as I'm using the rotary it's quite easy to dodge that point. Now what you get with the peacock herald, strip peacock herald, is you get that really authentic segmented body look which uh, I really like in my nymphs. Now although this is, uh, I've mentioned it's for still waters, this fly would be perfectly at home on moving water as well. I'd be more than comfortable to fish this for grayling. Okay, so I've caught that in and I'm going to bring my thread right up to the bead and then as I mentioned my preference is a little bit of UV resin. Now I don't like, I don't want a lot, just a very thin coat of UV. I don't, I'm not overly concerned about weight, that tungsten bead is going to do a job for me in getting the fly down. So if I choose to fish it under a bung, it will get to depth very quickly. Or if I want to just figure it back, I'll have plenty of movement with that weight. So I've got a nice thin layer on there. And obviously when you're using such a thin layer, it doesn't take a hundred years to cure. It's very quick. And I'm fairly happy with that. Now, next thing then, I'm going to put my thorax cover on. And what I'm using is some mirror tinsel. This is Mirage Iris. And I've already got a little bit off here. Again, anything you want to come on top of the shank... It needs to start its life slightly towards you. And I'm just going to come back. And then as you can see, my thorax cover is gently starting to come on top of the shank, which is perfect. Now, for the thorax itself, I'm using some Blue Dun Natural. This is a squirrel dubbing. I've already taken a little bit out of the packet. And you don't need very much. I want it to be not a huge, thick thorax. Uh, which, which does work for some flies, but not particularly well for this one. I find the thinner the thorax, the better the fly works out. So I'll just keep that nice and thin. Bring over my thorax cover, like so. And once I've caught that into place, I'm just going to put a little bit of pressure on, not too much. I don't want to cut through my thorax cover with my nano silk. And if you put too much pressure on, that's exactly what will happen. So I've got that in place. Now before I pull out the fibres there, I just want to get... A little bit of super glue onto my thread, like so. And then I can finish that off. As I say, my preference for this fly is under a bung. Uh, I've got to be honest, it's very effective. It's only very small, size 14. I, tie, I do tie these down to size 18. I'm just going to come in with my Velcro brush and pull out some of that material. And that gives it a lovely finish. And then it's ready for the box. I'll just show you the what the thorax cover looks like on top there. 
and there we go. You can fish it um, without a bung, of course, and just a slow figure of eight, and you can imagine it will rise up, and then when you stop retrieving, it will just drop back down in the water, and very often that's when the takes will come. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you all next time.